The spark. You know, the one you get when you stumble across that thing that has a large impact on your life, <laughs> only you don't really know it at the time. Well, one of those sparks happened while Sam was browsing a used book sale in 2001. He picked up a copy of Sousa 6, including the manual, and took it home. After installing and getting to know the new system, it was obvious. Sousa felt like a professional product. And at the time, that's some very high praise. Fast forward to late 2003 when the Sousa Linux company brand and trademarks were purchased by Novell. Whether or not it was the intent from the outset is unclear, but over the next couple of years, Novell opened up the insider-only development process, making SUSE accessible to everyone. This point becomes very relevant to our distro du jour later on. Then in August of 2005, Novell announced a new project, OpenSUSE. And in October, the project put out its very first stable release, SUSE Linux 10. Not long after, Sam picks up a SUSE Linux 10 installer disk from a CD vendor online, which may or may not have been faster than just downloading it. It was 2005, after all. Yeah. For Sam, besides the professional quality, SUSE had the additional perk of being the only distribution to support his modem and sound card. But while compatibility and YAST, the built-in administration tool, checked every box, the rest of the system, like defaults and overall bloat, weren't hitting it out of the park. It doesn't take a kernel hacker to guess what happened next. Yeah, distro hopping. For a decade. <laughs> During that distro-filled 10-year journey, the OpenSUSE project matured and in the mid-2010s started to cultivate their new, stable, leap, and fast-moving tumbleweed branches into reliable distributions. After taking the time again to distro hop back to OpenSUSE, we won't say how many times exactly, Sam found that this paradigm suited him fine. Something for the server, something for the laptop. And always one to see things through the eyes of a new user, it was Sam's experience that other people especially Linux beginners, even after 10 years, were having the same old problems they've always had understanding things like PPAs, RPM Fusion, and Pac-Man, with a K. And these types of things are a must, unless your wants and needs are fairly vanilla. On top of that frustration, OpenSUSE doesn't always compile system packages in a way that allows usage of proprietary additions among a few other annoyances. This, Sam thought, kept the default installation from being ready out of the box. With the guidance of SUSE Studio's web configuration service, Sam could fix those things. Adjust and tinker as necessary to drastically reduce the amount of frustration during the first time setup and pave the way for the proprietary bits that many Linux users rely on every day. Even better, and let you create an installation image and distribute it too. So that's exactly what happened. Sam started producing installation ISOs. The new ISOs got a name. Gecko Linux. All one word. And on the 13th of November, 2015, the first ever Gecko Linux 421.15.11.13.6 was announced. It came with a cinnamon desktop, a live mode, proprietary codex, and much better font rendering. Oh, and that long version number? It means something. The 421 means it's based on OpenSUSE Leap 42.1. The 15, 11, and 13 is the date in year, month, day. And the final dot six is how many revisions. It was a few. Sam built Gecko Linux from the outset knowing full well one-man distros like Gecko Linux have a single point of failure. A bus factor, if you will. He's not even a fan of one-man distros himself, especially after being burned by them. 
but for users of Gecko Linux, there's nothing to worry about. Under the hood, Gecko Linux is just OpenSUSE with a facelift. No modified packages here. Simply configurable choices using packages from upstream OpenSUSE and a few Pac-Man repositories. These would exist with or without Gecko Linux. In December, alongside Cinnamon, XFCE, GNOME, and Budgie were added to the desktop lineup, as well as a barebones edition to give more control to the user. And a few days later, Plasma, Mate, and LXQT get their first ISOs too. And in June of 2016, the first rolling editions of Gecko Linux appear, keeping pace with upstream Tumbleweed. It's the same Gecko Linux configurations and editions, but now in the fast lane. In November of the same year, the next edition was announced. Its purpose? To have both the stability of Leap as a base, but add on newer desktop packages like in Tumbleweed. This was done by adding open build system repositories that had current versions of the user's preferred desktop. Plasma was first up. Also, while SUSE Studio would allow ISO downloads directly from the studio site, it wasn't fast enough for the growing distribution. So images were moved over to SourceForge. OpenSUSE, by the way, weren't slowing down. They had released 42.2 in November, and by mid-December, the first static edition ISOs of Gecko Linux based on the new release. By February of 2017, the Plasma Next edition was released on 42.2 as well. And in July, OpenSUSE released 42.3. But something was changing in the background. 42.3 wasn't available within SUSE Studio. And after a few months, OpenSUSE announced why. SUSE Studio Online would be merging with Open Build Service to form SUSE Studio Express, and would be the only way to spin new ISOs based on OpenSUSE Leap 42.3. The ISO releases that were, up until now, somewhat regular, slowed down. It would be almost an entire year before Sam got up to speed with Kiwi, the new build system he needed to use to roll these ISOs, and get an ISO out the door. But in January of 2018, the static and next editions were finally ready, based on 42.3. Overall, the issue was a small one, at least as far as the users were concerned. The rolling editions kept rolling, and the static editions, as long as you were already on the 42.2 base, simply kept getting updates too. But what didn't lurch forward was the Budgie desktop. There just wasn't a maintainer keeping up with Budgie during the 42.3 release cycle, so it was put on ice for a while. In May, OpenSUSE Leap 15.0 released, and in early June, with Kiwi experience already earned, Gecko Linux followed. From this point, release information lived mainly in GitHub releases rather than the website itself. It was just simpler this way. In May of 2019, OpenSUSE Leap 15.1 was released, and in July of 2022, 15.2 was released as well, but with no new Gecko Linux releases. But through the magic of OpenSUSE Leap and Tumbleweed, the static and rolling editions of Gecko Linux could still stay up to date. It's the folks trying to install fresh that might suffer if they had fairly new hardware. Still, in July, that all changed a couple weeks later when Gecko Linux released new static ISOs based on 15.2 but it had an incorrect URL for an NVIDIA repository forcing a new ISO. But alongside a new static ISO revision came the Plasma Next update and the rolling edition refresh. In September, Pantheon is the first newly added desktop in quite a while in both Pantheon rolling and Next editions. And the Budgie rolling and Next editions make a return as well thanks to the new Budgie maintainer. In April 2021, a vote for which default file system Gecko Linux rolling should use was held, with ButterFS winning. And in May, the same vote, but for the static edition was held. Again, ButterFS won. Still in May, after a small snag with GPT partition creation, the rolling editions were released with the ButterFS change, as well as ZRAM and the early OOM daemon enabled. And after the release of OpenSUSE Leap 15.3 in early June, less than a week 
later, Gecko's static, based on it, was released, and with it, the fruits of the vote. LZO transparent compression by default, snapper configured ZRAM and early OOM as well. Around this time, Pantheon maintainership wavered, same as Budgie back in 2020. But a new maintainer was quickly found to take over, and new rolling and static editions released based on it in early 2022. After the package maintainership issues were resolved, new problems for the static release arose. In April, the OpenSUSE team was already talking about the inevitable release of Leap 15.5, the new adaptable Linux platform, and how resources are not unlimited. This meant beyond Leap 15.5, Leap as it is will no longer exist. Lubosh Kotzman said, the plan is that the next community enterprise distribution, Leap, will be ALP itself, as it will be developed open or closely based on ALP. I believe it makes sense to steer community effort there as it pays off in the long run. In the interim, on the 8th of June, OpenSUSE Leap 15.4 released, and while slightly longer than normal, Gecko Linux followed up with static ISOs two months later in August. In the release announcement, Sam noted that users of the Gecko Linux Static Edition should be aware that SUSE will be replacing OpenSUSE Leap after version 15.5 with a radically different Linux product currently in early development as ALP. So unless something changes, current OpenSUSE Leap installations and by extension Gecko Linux Static installations will no longer be supported a few years from now. As Sam said, it doesn't mean much right now, since Leap 15.4 is supported until late 2023 and 15.5 until sometime in 2024, but that doesn't mean Sam is just running out the clock. Enter Spiral Linux. All of the conveniences of Gecko Linux static, but based on Debian instead. Because, well, Debian is Debian, and their release model is predictable. That also means that it carries the bus factor considerations. Spiral Linux is just Debian with tweaks. The same as Gecko Linux is OpenSUSE with tweaks. Without Sam, the installations will continue to exist purely on the shoulders of Debian and OpenSUSE without user interaction. There hadn't been a release in 2023 just yet, but as far as we can tell, Sam never wavered in his mission to improve OpenSUSE and has done a bang-up job since Gecko Linux's inception. Tumbleweed-based rolling edition will keep rolling, but the Leap-based static edition without some serious changes in OpenSUSE's trajectory may not exist in the future. And before we close out the history, I just want to give a big thank you to Sam, the Gecko Linux founder, for enduring our question bombardment. I do have to say, the, the answers that he gave to the questions that we asked were above and beyond all expectation for level of detail. I agree. Um, the, story, the story that we wove um, I just would not have existed without, uh, without the level of detail that, that he added. So, so sincerely, thank you, yes. Sam, for, uh, for all the effort that you put into, uh, I guess, all of your communication between yep. uh, you and us. I really, really appreciate it. Yep. Wouldn't have been the same without it. 